Hey there. Today I'm going to show you how to very quickly set up a local development environment for a Jekyll blog using Docker and then how to host that blog on GitHub pages. So Jekyll is a static website generator written in Ruby and Jekyll's great. It's simple yet powerful, but because it's written in Ruby, it means you'll need to set up a Ruby environment on your development platform, which can be a little tricky sometimes, especially if you're switching machines often. You gotta manage different versions of Ruby and stuff like that. So to get around this, we're gonna use Docker, mainly just to verify our work on a local Jekyll server before pushing our code to GitHub to be hosted on GitHub pages. So I have a couple of blogs that are using Jekyll, but I figured instead of demonstrating this with my own blog, we'll uh, pull a sample project from somewhere so you can follow along. So let's go to Google, type in Jekyll themes, and we'll uh, let's just use this one here. So we'll just go here and download it. So see here we have our uh, Jekyll blog here. It's an archive, so let's unzip that. And we'll see what we, what we have here. So there's our Jekyll blog. So the next step is to find a Docker image that contains our Jekyll environment. So let's go to Docker Hub. And we'll search for Jekyll. Okay, here's the official image. So that's how pull it from the command line. Let's find some tags here. Don't want to use latest. Um, okay, so we'll use Jekyll 4.0 here. So let's just grab this here and make sure we're in the directory that contains our Jekyll blog. So I'm assuming you have a bit of familiarity with Docker and have a Docker set up on your machine. So let's just make this a little bigger here. So the command we want to run here is docker run. We'll move this when we're done with it. We'll make a bind mount here. Let's use the uh, current working directory. And we'll mount this inside the container at Sir Jekyll. This is where Jekyll expects our blog source to be found. And we'll open a port here. We'll expose port 4000 on our local machine. We'll bind that to port 4000 on the container. And then we'll pull in that tag we got from Docker Hub. And the command we want to run inside the container is Jekyll serve. So you'll see here it hasn't found the image locally. So it's going to go out and pull it. So this might take a little while since we don't have any of these layers. So you can see now it's running Jekyll here inside the inside the container. Pulling down our gems. This is all stuff we'd have to manage locally, which can be a bit of a headache sometimes. And yeah, this takes a little while the first time, but once you have this image on your machine, getting this up and running is quite quick. Okay, and there you go. See Jekyll's now running and surveying our site. So let's just visit this localhost port 4000. And there we are, there's our blog. So I'm gonna hit control C here to kill our Jekyll server. And now you'll see we can't access our site. I'm just gonna get this open in uh, VS Code so we can edit uh, some of our files here and watch our Jekyll server automatically update our site. Okay, so we have VS Code running here. So let's just run this command again. And you'll see it'll be a lot quicker than last time because we have this image locally. Okay, so we have it back up and running. So let's reload this page here. Port 4000 on our localhost. So let's just make a little change here to this first post so we can see it change in real time here. So let's just change the title maybe. Blah, blah, demo. We'll save that and we can see Jekyll's reloading this page. So let's hit refresh on our browser. There we go. Our changes are happening. Jekyll's automatically reloading those. So this is great for local development. You don't have to worry about setting up a Ruby environment and all that. So you just run this Jekyll server inside a Docker container to do your local development. And then when you're satisfied with your changes, then you can commit them and push them to your host. And in this case, we're just going to use GitHub pages. So I'll show you how to do that soon, but first let's write a Docker Compose file to set up our Jekyll service. It's a much cleaner way of maintaining our build configuration and doesn't involve remembering and typing in a long command line each time we want to bring up our Jekyll server. It's also quicker to bring up and down Docker containers as you can simply stop the services with one command instead of deleting the networks and volumes that they have been using. 
So let's just create a file in the root of our Jekyll project. We'll call it docker compose .yaml. So here's the docker run command that we want to translate into a compose file here. So first thing here, we'll give it a name. Then we want to specify the image we want to use. So we're going to use Jekyll right here. It's 4.0. Okay, and we want to specify our volumes. So it's that one volume here. Docker Compose is good at recognizing relative paths. So we'll just use our current directory here because we're in the root. And we want to mount this on slash serve plus Jekyll in our container. Okay, so now let's specify our ports. 4000 here. So I'll open up 4000 on our local. And the command we want to run inside is just Jekyll. So, and that should actually just be it for compose file. Okay, so let's see if we got this right. Make sure you're in the same directory as your Jekyll blog and your compose file. And let's just run docker compose up. So this will take a little while for the first time again, because it's got to create our networks and our mounts and all that. But once we run this once, we can keep our container, the networks, and all that around so we can quickly bring up and down our container using Docker Compose. Okay, so it looks like it's working correctly. So let's refresh this, make sure it's working on a browser. Okay, right on. Uh, maybe let's try changing this title again. There we go, it's reloading. And everything seems to be working. So that's a lot easier than remembering that long command line. And we can change our parameters here in this Docker Compose if you want anything to change. Let's open another terminal here. And we can bring these containers down. Actually, we can just stop them first. So we run Docker Compose, stop. So bring down our containers, but won't remove them. So now if you want to bring it back up, it'll come up very quickly. And there we go, here's our site. Now if we want to remove these containers and networks and the volume, what we're going to do is run docker compose down. Now the image will still be found on our local machine, so we can still bring it up quite quickly by just running up again. But you can see it's now having to create our network and attaching our bind mount and all that, so it will take a bit longer. So if you want to be pulling these servers up and down quite quickly, I would use this docker stop to stop uh, our container and, and not remove its network and volume. So now that we've got everything working, I'll show you how to quickly host this blog on GitHub Pages. So right now we have our Docker Compose file in our blog in the root. You may want to move this if you're going to host it, but I'm not going to bother for now. So let's just create a new repo. And let's make a, this initial commit here. So let's go to GitHub here. Create a new repository. Let's call this Jekyll Demo. I will make this private. So let's uh, push our repo here. Okay, right on. Let's go into settings here. And now we're going to go under the GitHub pages section. And we'll use master. If you refresh the page, you'll see that our Jekyll blog is being hosted here at this domain. A lot of these teams won't work exactly right out of the box as you'd expect. We'll see we're missing some styles here. So you will have to do a bit of tweaking depending on which theme you're using. But if you if you pick a theme that's specifically made for GitHub pages, you should have no issues and you can kind of just use that as your base. All right, so I hope that gave you some idea of how to use Docker and Docker Compose to set up a local dev environment. In this case, it was a Jekyll server. You can see how you could extend this to uh, other development needs. And I gave you a quick demo of how you would host a static site on GitHub pages. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.